Kicking off the list at number 10, the beings. These words came from someone who claimed to see hell during their close call with death. We're off to a hot start. Literally, here we go. They said, I remember feeling terrified. It was so cold and I could not see anything below me, so it was hard to figure out what was going on exactly. As the beings pulled me in closer, it seemed squishy and wet, as well as dark and cold. Meanwhile, the beings all around me were ripping and tearing at me. That's horrible. I was thinking that I didn't like this at all and wanted to go back. I do not know what these beings are, nor am I interested in finding out more than fair. That sounds like the most horrifying experience at this point. Honestly, I'd rather take nothingness at the end of a life, like some others talk about, than this. I can barely handle sleep paralysis demons, let alone demons from the other side. Hard pass for me. Glad you're okay, but hard pass. In our number nine spot today, we have the dream. This Reddit story comes from someone who really knows how to paint quite a vivid picture. This person actually experienced their close call after being impaled with a fillet knife. They go on to write, quote, I had tried to crawl up from my basement to phone 911, but I was so weak and every time I moved, I started bleeding harder. I remember passing out and having the sensation like I was leaving a dark room and moving outside into the sun. I stopped panicking and this feeling of pure contentment settled over me. I was floating over a garden where all of the plants were giving off light and I could see a huge amorphous shape above me that was made up of every color in existence including colors I have never seen before and couldn't possibly describe. The shape seemed familiar like I was a part of it and it was beckoning to me and filling me with pure ecstasy and understanding as I looked at it. Then a man who looked an awful lot like Dream from the Sandman comics, which I was obsessed with at the time, walked over to me through the garden and told me that I couldn't go home yet, that it wasn't time. I started weeping but I was filled with a feeling of understanding, like I knew that I had to go back despite not wanting to. The man had tears streaming down his face and he took my hand and led me back to my body which was in an ambulance. My older brother had found me and called 911. This sounds like while having one of the most horrific experiences, this person was having one of the most peaceful and tranquil moments of their entire life. It really is interesting what these kinds of experiences can do to our bodies and brains. Number 8. Guest Appearance This Reddit story starts out when the OP was was in the middle of having an anaphylactic reaction, and at this point, they had stopped breathing entirely. What an absolute nightmare. They remember having visions and hallucinations during this experience, and once they were healed up, they figured the hallucinations and whatever they saw, they figured that was just part of the reaction. They didn't think much of it at first until they explained to their mom later on what exactly it was that they saw. They saw a middle-aged man who wasn't in scrubs standing at the end of the hospital bed while all the staff was running around and doing their business. I was having a non-verbal conversation with him, and he was telling me to calm down and to focus on my breathing. He wore a tropical style button down shirt, one of those old school newsboys hats and had a very pleasant demeanor. Mom then showed me a photo of my grandfather that I'd never seen before and it was the same guy at the foot of my bed and he died before I was even born. So he'd never even seen them. That's crazy. Well this man has style in the afterlife it seems. That's pretty wild. Has this happened to anybody else before? Have you experienced any type of reaction where you unconsciously see your family? You probably don't forget something like that so let us know in the comments down below. In our number seven spot today we have shadows, sunflowers, and streams. This story was posted on Reddit by a user called Through the Shadows and their story is in reference to a time when their wife was in a coma and it was looking like she wasn't going to make it. You know, it's at the point where the hard conversations are being had. Surprisingly, there's a shocking and complete turnaround and she ended up making a completely miraculous recovery. Truly the best outcome of what was likely a horrifying situation and while the storyteller's wife doesn't remember much from her time in the coma, she remembers two very vivid things that she calls dreams. In the first dream, she was having a a fun party and everything was great except for one guy who she calls sleazy and she said gave her the creeps. He was charming and invited her to go with him but she refused and said that she knew that he was a bad guy. This guy then told her that he was going to take her soul and torment it until he destroyed it which of course led to her running away from him and then that was the end of that dream. In the second dream she woke up alone in a field of sunflowers. There was a stream of water that separated the field from this beautiful forest and when she went towards the stream she noticed that there were leaves with people's names on them that she loved like family names, pet names and then they were floating down the stream. At this point she knew she couldn't quite cross the stream so she walked back into the field. Number six, regret. This story comes from a Redditor who had their afterlife experience after attempting to take their own life. They were thankfully saved in the ambulance, they gained consciousness for about five seconds and then they collapsed into a coma right afterwards. After being in a coma for a few weeks they wrote about their experience on the other side. They said all I remember 
number is a feeling similar to general anesthesia, but before it went black, I was in total panic and I had a total change of heart in my decision to end it seconds before. And then it was just nothing. Like a deep sleep almost. And when I finally awoke from the coma, it was like finally reaching the surface of a pool after diving too deep. I was in the same panic that I was immediately after I jumped from my table. Like I just blinked instead of being knocked out for two weeks. I don't remember anything at all. It was like being in a deep dreamless sleep. Perhaps if I regained consciousness immediately after, I'd remember something more interesting, but nothing is about all I can offer. Honestly, I'll, I'll take that. I'm glad nothing is the case here than demons or anything else that we've seen on this list. And also, we're glad you're alright. Stay strong. In our number five spot today, we have the hair haircut catastrophe. This story starts out with the OP explaining that their afterlife experience came after they had suffered a seizure. It's a good time to remind everyone that not all seizures look the same, like how this person just put their head down and simply stopped breathing. How absolutely terrifying that would be. They were getting their hair done at the time and while they sat there and their lips were turning blue, they could hear what was going on around them as the poor stylist was yelling into their phone for the ambulance to get there. They then go on to write, quote, I was aware of being very warm and comfortable. I knew I was not breathing, but there was no anxiety or discomfort with it. Everything was very relaxed. There is a sense of otherness. I would call it God, no gender, but all other names in different religions applied just as well. I knew then, just as I can tell you my name now, that there is no one right religion or spirituality. Just like you can climb a mountain using more than one trail, so is our non-physical life. When you die, you can choose to stay forever as a separate being, reincarnate into another life, stay for a while, then reincarnate, or simply become part of the otherness and lose yourself in it. I was told it was not my time, that each of us has a set time to live on earth. When your time is up, it is up. I was not given an explanation beyond that. I got sent back and started breathing on my own before the ambulance guys could do much with me. Honestly, this might be the wrong time to ask, but I'm just wondering if the stylist finished the haircut after. Number four, the wake up. This one's a little different from the others on this list. It comes from the Reddit user Brofist Panda. Also, great name. When they experienced death, they said it wasn't really like anything at all. In fact, it was just like sleeping. They do, however, remember being resuscitated. They said it was like shock all of a sudden and then boom, you take the most painful gasp of and your eyes are burning from the lights around you and you see all these people in masks standing around you have to now restrain you so that you don't jump up and rip out your IV. Which, yeah, more than fair. I couldn't imagine waking up to any of that visually, let alone feeling it at the same time. That's That's gotta be a lot. I'm glad you ended up making it. You are a trooper. Hashtag Brofist Panda. I'm gonna steal that name. In our number three spot today, we have 45 minutes. Brian Miller is a man who is from Ohio and he had a death experience after he suffered a terrible, massive heart attack. That wasn't the end though, as to the surprise of the nurse, and doctors around him, after 45 minutes, his heart began to beat again. The 41-year-old has now gone on to speak about what he saw in the time that he was gone. He said he saw light and that he saw relatives who had already passed away. He explains that he was walking on a path that was lined with flowers when he was stopped by his mother-in-law, who had passed away quite recently. He said, quote, She grabbed a hold of my arm and she told me that it's not your time. While this story is certainly intriguing, what's even more fascinating is how, for the 45 minutes he was gone, his brain did not receive any oxygen, and yet, upon his return, he miraculously did not suffer any brain damage. I have so many questions as to how that's possible. I guess it really was just not his time yet. Number two, the big empty. This story comes from Reddit user Sin Jessica. It's about a near-death experience they had after attempting to take their own life. After they felt time slow down, they came to a place that they referred to as the big empty. And the way they described it, it was just literally just plain nothingness. They say they don't really know how to describe it, but honestly, I think they did a pretty bang up job. They call it a void and say there's no darkness, there's no you, there's no nothing, that makes sense. It's such a complete lack of anything at all that it can't even be described as empty because that would imply it could be filled with something to begin with. Know what I mean? Some deep stuff like that. It's hard to even realize that this exists because you can't even really perceive it in your mind. Now luckily this person had a nosy neighbor who saw what was unfolding at this time and reacted quickly and saved their life. And since that day, things have been a lot better for Sin Justica, which is just the best news. But at the same time, the Reddit user reminds us the Big Empty still haunts them. More than fair. It's called The Big Empty. I mean, that would stick in my brain too. In our number one spot today, we have The Sister Visit. This story comes from someone who is a nurse at an assisted living facility. Imagine that job. That would be a super difficult job to have. I definitely couldn't do it. This story, however, is kind of unbelievable. They write, quote, Yesterday, a resident on another unit, but same floor as mine, went unresponsive at 7.30. Sternal rub given with no response, eyes closed, no response to anyone or anything. 
anything. Doctor and family called in. Family did not want him sent to a hospital, so they began palliative care, expecting death that same morning. Two hours later, with family in the room, he opens his eyes. His wife says, Where have you been? He says, I went to heaven. It's so beautiful there. My sisters were there and they were healthy and gorgeous. I was asked if I wanted to come back and I said, for a while. He had two sisters that died years ago. Today he ate his breakfast in the dining room and we are all in awe of his story. It's the best possible outcome. The ideal ending. Really, what more could you ask for? Starting off this countdown, we have Tony Sicoria. In 1994, a man named Tony Sicoria was struck by lightning while talking to his mom on a payphone. When he was struck, he felt his body fly backwards and then he flew forward. He turned around and he saw his own body laying on the ground. He stared at himself and felt nothing. Then he saw a woman start CPR on him. As this was going on, Tony began to float upwards. He was now floating up the stairs of his house and saw his kids getting their face painted. Then all of a sudden he was surrounded by a bluish white light and he felt at peace. Then bam, he was back. He had been revived at the hospital. That story is just crazy for so many different reasons. Coming in at number nine, we have Miss Zilla. This story was shared by Ed Zilla. He shared the story on behalf of his wife. A couple of years ago, his wife died twice in three months. Bot was successfully resuscitated both times. But the resuscitation took a long time, almost hours. Later, she shared with him what she experienced. According to her, she remembered nothing. There was just blackness. No light, no relatives, no former pets, just blackness. But there was also no pain. Okay, so this one is like a little more depressing. And sadly, a couple months ago, she did pass away. At least her husband knows that there's no pain in the afterlife. Now, before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because it really helps us out and I appreciate it. So thank you. Hit that button. And at number eight, we have The Revival. This story was shared by Reddit user Old Belgian Smurf. A couple of years ago, he almost passed away from drowning. He had been dead for a number of minutes before someone pulled him out of the water and revived him. According to him, all he saw was blackness. The blackness was then followed by a number of lights. The lights turned into stars, and the stars turned into something he said he just can't explain. While this was going on, he didn't feel anything. He was just in the moment. And then before he knew it, he was alive again, laying back on the beach. Moving on to number seven, we have the surgery gone wrong. Over 10 years ago, Reddit user Monitor Monkey underwent a huge surgery. However, it went wrong. During the surgery, he bled out and he was pronounced dead. That's when he woke up in what he described as space. But there weren't any stars or lights. He was just kind of floating in this void and he didn't feel anything. He wasn't hot or cold or hungry or tired. He just felt at peace. Then he remembers thinking back to his life. Now it wasn't like his life flashing before his eyes. He was just thinking back to moments in his life. Then he was saved and brought back to life. He disappeared from this space area and was back in his body on the operating table. Now, quite a few people talk about this black void space. It's really quite interesting. Coming in at number six, we have Mary C. Neal. Mary C. Neal is an orthopedic surgeon who several years ago experienced the afterlife. This occurred when she almost drowned while out kayaking in Chile. Chile. Her heart stopped for more than half an hour. I know. That's crazy. Well, soon after she felt herself leaving her body, she was then greeted by a group of beings, some of who she knew, some of who she didn't. She felt nothing but peace and happiness in their company. Then all of a sudden she was aware that she was headed to heaven, but also aware of what was happening to her on the riverbank where she had drowned. Then, like everyone else on this list, she was saved and brought back into her body. After this experience, she went on to write the book Seven Lessons from Heaven. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the drugs. Reddit user, I don't know, stop asking me, that's literally their name, shared the story of the time his uncle passed away and then was brought back to life. So several years ago, his uncle had overdosed. He was gone for two minutes. According to his uncle, while his brain and body shut down, he was sitting at a picnic table at a park behind his childhood home. He was sitting there with someone. He didn't know who, but he knew that he loved them. He was talking to them when they said, I'll see you later, remember me. Then after this, he was revived. 
After that experience, he quit drugs for good. Moving on to number four, we have the dad. Whiskey Nostalgic on Reddit shared her dad's story with the afterlife. So when her dad passed away, apparently he was transported into this long hallway. At the end of this hallway, there was a door. He walked down the hallway towards the door. But just as he was about to open it, he felt himself get sucked away and back into his own body. Now, what I want to know is what was behind the door? Was it heaven? Was it that void some people have described? I really want to know. In our third spot, we have the great grandmother. This next person was pronounced dead two times in one night. That night they had gotten into a really bad car accident. All they remember is being pulled out of the car by their great grandmother. They both then walked through a field of flowers together. She felt at peace. Two weeks later, she woke up in the hospital. There, she saw her great-grandmother tell her everything was going to be okay before she disappeared. Her great-grandmother had passed away when she was 10 and came back to guide her back to her body. Like, that's an amazing story. Moving on to number two, we have Jane Seymour. Actress Jane Seymour also had an experience with the afterlife. This occurred in 1988 while she was filming Onassis. While filming, she went into an anaphylactic shock after her bronchitis antibiotics were injected into her vein instead of her muscle. All of a sudden, she saw the infamous white light and she was looking down on herself from above. She could see the nurse frantically try to save her and thankfully, she did. All of a sudden, she flew back down and was back in her own body. And in our number one spot, we have Eben Alexander. In 2008, neurosurgeon Eben Alexander slipped into a coma after being infected by a rare case of meningitis. When this happened, he was encountered by the spinning clear light. He described this as a portal that opened up another realm. He called it the Gateway Valley. He went on to say it was filled with vibrant plants and flowers and crystal pools. Everything was beautiful and bright. There was also thousands of people there dancing and gold orbs flew in the sky. After being unconscious for a week, he woke up. Miraculously, he didn't suffer from any brain damage. He went on to write the book Proof of Heaven, and in there he describes in great detail the experience that he went through. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Jessica's NDE story. This is a story from a woman named Jessica who had a near-death experience after an accidental overdose from drugs that had been laced. She first describes falling backwards, but she explained that it felt like she was falling forever. She then describes her version of seeing her life flash before her eyes, but instead of her whole life, she was only seeing visions of what she had done wrong and all of the mistakes that she had made. She then found herself in a version of the city where she was born, but she said that it looked like it had been hit by a bomb. She said that she had a feeling like she was in hell and her visions showed her why she was there. Luckily though, she was suddenly back in her body and alive, which left her feeling incredibly grateful and determined to change her life around for the better, which she did. This is definitely a very freaky story, but I'm really glad it had such a positive ending. In our number nine spot today, we have the beings. These words came from someone who claimed to see hell after they attempted to take their own life. They said, I remember feeling terrified. It was so dark and I could not see anything below me, so it was hard to figure out what was going on. As the beings pulled me into their midst, it seemed squishy and wet, as well as dark and cold. Meanwhile, the beings all around me were ripping and tearing at me. I was thinking that I didn't like any of this at all and I wanted to go back. I am truly not sure what beings they encountered, but I also absolutely do not want to find out. I'm very glad this person ended up being brought back to life from a super scary place that they went to. In our number eight spot today, we have Taylor's NDE story. This story comes from some on Reddit who has since deleted their account, so I unfortunately do not have their username, but we'll call them Taylor for today. Taylor had attempted to take their own life when they were younger without really thinking of the consequences. Taylor explained that as they were having their near-death experience, the fact that there was just nothing totally shocked and frightened them. After realizing that this may be all that's awaiting for them, they began trying their absolute hardest to get back to life. They explained kind of coming in and out of life and the times that they slipped back into the nothingness were unbelievably scary and then they'd fight harder and be back in the ambulance. Once they arrived at the hospital, a preacher read them their last rites and they just described being too tired to continue 
continue on fighting, and then they went back to the nothingness. Luckily, they woke up just a few days later and have been in a much better place ever since, which is exactly what we want to hear. In our number seven spot today, we have Brofist Panda. This one is a little different from the others on this list and comes from a Reddit user called Brofist Panda which is an incredible username. They explained that when they experienced death, they said it wasn't really like anything. It was just like sleeping. Okay, that's not the worst thing. But then they go on to say that they do, however, remember being resuscitated. They said it was like a shock and then boom, you take the most painful gasp of air and your eyes are burning from the lights and you see all of these people in masks around you who have to restrain you so that you don't jump up and rip out your IV. I honestly can't blame this person at all because that would be an undoubtedly terrifying feeling and I'm also sure it would be very confusing. I'm glad that their overall experience wasn't too, too frightening and that they ended up being totally okay. In our number six spot today, we have Hannah's NDE story. This story comes from a Czech woman named Hannah who experienced complications from pneumonia, which is what led to her near-death experience. While others on this list have scary words about the visions they saw, Hannah's story is not terrifying because of what she saw, but what she felt. She explains she saw a gray area that had lots of scattered boards and beams. She then explains that in the top right, there was a circular light with an extremely bright center that she said felt really inviting and it was bringing her in. It was at this point that she realized what was happening and that the light was leading her into passing over. She said, suddenly I realized with horror that it was the transition between life and death. I said, I do not want to enter. I have not tried everything in my life. I'm very glad that Hannah was able to fight through and come back so that she could have all the experiences that she dreamed of. In our number five spot today, we have this childbirth NDE. This story comes from a woman who experienced death during childbirth, which is absolutely terrifying. She said that she noticed she was heading towards a black distance and she said she felt like she was descending to hell. She describes trying to scream but not being able to produce any sound which actually gives me the chills. She said she was just spinning in circles and felt like she could continue like that forever. She also said that she felt loneliness and emptiness from being in that space. Luckily, she was able to come back from the brink in order to be there for her baby, which is the ending that we all needed for sure. In our number four spot today, we have The Void. I'm not exactly sure what caused this woman's close encounter with death, but she is another person who experienced the black void that a lot of others have on this list. She explains that she was drawn in by the dark void after death. She said she did not feel her body, which made her totally terrified. She said this is when she experienced nothingness and said it was like a dream. She said she felt drawn in by this void and said that she felt like she was heading towards another realm of existence. I'm not exactly sure what that would feel like, but I think I'm very grateful that I don't know. In the end, she was of course able to be resuscitated and brought back, which I am very, very glad about. In our number three spot today, we have Tyler Black 729's NDE experience. This story comes from Tyler Black 729 on Reddit, but it is actually a story from their father and his experience while having open heart surgery when he was in his 20s. The doctors had to stop his heart for around 20 to 30 minutes during the procedure so that they could put a mechanical valve in. Before this surgery, he explained that he wasn't really on a great path in life and had been involved in some things he definitely shouldn't have been. So, while his heart was stopped on the operating table, he found himself in a very dark place and began wandering and searching around. This is when he started running into really scary people that looked really strange and they were all screaming at him. He was running away as fast as he could and found a corner to hide in. The people were continually getting closer though and right before they got him, he saw his grandmother who had previously passed away and she reached down to grab him. The next thing he remembered was being back in the hospital. He is convinced that he was in a temporary hell and this scare was enough for him to completely turn his life around. It's really scary that he had these experiences, but I'm glad things turned out for the better and that his grandmother was there to rescue him. In the number two spot today, we have Piotr's NDE story. A Polish man named Piotr once tried to take his own life 
pretty early on in his life, which is extremely sad. He explains that his first visions were of people right beside him, but they were people in his life who had already passed away. He said that they were all friendly to him, but that they were also terrifyingly sad. After this, he explained that he felt like he was being dragged into a dark abyss that was supposed to be the afterlife, and in seeing the dark distance, he realized how frightening the situation was. He then explains that he was brought back to life by a commanding voice. I'm not sure what this commanding voice was, but I am glad he heard it and listened. Piotr's story has also been featured in a book titled The Polish Life Afterlife. And in our number one spot today, we have Sin Justica's NDE story. This story comes from a Reddit user called Sin Justica about a near-death experience they had after attempting to take their own life. After explaining that they felt time slow down, they came to a place that they now call the Big Empty, and the way they describe it is just plain nothingness. They say that they don't really know how to describe it, but I think that they did a fantastic job. They call it a void, and then they say, there's no darkness, there's no you, there's nothing. It's such a complete lack of anything at all that it can't even be described as empty because that would imply that it could be filled with something. It's hard to even realize that it exists because you can't even really perceive it. Luckily, this person had a nosy neighbor who saw what was happening and reacted quickly in order to save them. Since that terrible day, things have been much better for Sin Jessica, which is just the best news, but they do explain that the big empty still haunts them, knowing that one day they'll have to go back there. <laughs> 